Paul, thank you. Uh, Mike, uh, nice to see you again today. And Steve, I look forward to, hearing, forward to hearing what you have to say. Kurt and Checkpoint, thanks for having me. Um, as Paul said, uh, my name's Alistair McGibbon. I'm the uh, Children's eSafety Commissioner designate. Now, the reason why I have the word designate is uh, the Enhancing Online Safety of Children Act, uh, while it's being passed by the Parliament and has received royal assent, uh, has uh, yet to be proclaimed, and that'll be uh, later on this year. So at the moment, we're setting up the Office of the Children's eSafety Commissioner. Now, as Paul said, uh, I was, uh, until quite recently, at Dimension Data. All the Dimension Data people in the room here today? Drop your hands. I saw a few before, hello. Uh, uh, prior to that, uh, I, I ran uh, an organisation at the University of Canberra called the Centre for Internet Safety. Uh, prior to that, I ran an area called Trust and Safety at eBay. Uh, and before that, I was in the Australian Federal Police where we set up the Australian High Tech Crime Centre. Uh, I had 11 years so this, this lapel mic's clearly not working, so I'll stand, I'll stand near these microphones. Um, uh, I had 11 years out of government, uh, so it's quite exciting to be back, um, uh, which some of you might think is cynical, but it's actually not. Uh, I think the great thing about this role is I spent 15 years in government, 11 years out, and now I bring those combined experiences uh, to the new role. As I said, the Enhancing Online Safety of Children Act was passed uh, by uh, the Commonwealth Parliament earlier this year. And if anyone follows legislation, uh, it actually passed quite quickly through both Houses of Parliament with significant support uh, from all sides, which I think is indicative of the level of public concern about uh, the way in which our kids are engaging with technology. Uh, the Act does two things. Firstly, it creates the Office of Commissioner uh, uh, and the person to take a, a national leadership role for the responsibility and, uh, of safety of children online. That's the role I'll be taking up. Uh, and the second is a complaints, uh, a complaints system uh, that has two parts to it that I will briefly explain. Uh, but if I can summarise what the office is about, it's really to provide uh, a safety net for Australian children online. It's not there to stop problems for kids uh, as the only uh, government entity. It's not there to replace families and schools. It's not there to replace you uh, as a broader society. It's there as a safety net to help kids uh, should things go wrong. Now, uh, it's trite to say just how much technology kids are using and uh, how rapidly they've uh, taken to this technology. Uh, it would be uh, probably again tried to say uh, to those of you who have kids to, to know that some of them are misusing this technology at a pace that can outstrip uh, what uh, many of us could even think was humanly possible. A survey commissioned last year by the Commonwealth Government uh, showed that one in five Australian kids aged between 12 and 17 suffer each year uh, uh, from cyberbullying. And we know that cyberbullying is incredibly damaging. Uh, we know that it affects them in physical and mental ways and can lead to quite catastrophic circumstances. And this office has very specific powers in relation to cyberbullying and then very broad education authority in relation to the overall safety of children. Now, uh, how the complaint system will work is the office has the power to remove social media content uh, that, uh, that relates to, to cyberbullying, serious cyberbullying. Uh, and through that, we'll have a, a social media scheme. Uh, and the other component of the takedown provisions relates to what we call the end user notice scheme, which I'll give some more detail uh, shortly. But importantly, as I said, we're a safety net. The first thing a child or their family needs to do is to go to the social media service themselves uh, to make a complaint. Uh, these social media services already have systems in place. They have uh, rules and policies. Uh, that uh, uh, should they follow those rules and policies and act on matters, uh, then this office will never hear of those complaints. The office is there, uh, should the social media service not take down information, um, to work with that social media service to do so. And, and they must do that within 48 hours. Now, I mentioned uh, that uh, uh, it, it, we're a safety net. The, the Commonwealth legislation here is also very much light touch. Um, it's light touch in that this is a cooperative regime with the social media services. Uh, they are, uh, should they enrol, I can invite them to become what we call a tier one social media service. Uh, and, and that is a cooperative regime where we will work with those companies. Should there be a systematic course of conduct in them not 
accepting what the office has to say, we can enrol them, uh, not voluntarily, in what we call Tier 2. And at that time, the social media services are compelled to take down uh, information that's damaging to children, seriously threatening, seriously intimidating, seriously harassing or seriously humiliating information. Uh, and should they not do so, uh, they can be fined $17,000 a day per notice that they disregard from me. Uh, and we believe that will cause uh, them to take action. Now, I must say that in our early meetings with those social media companies, uh, I'm really heartened. I'm heartened that they understand the role of this legislation. They understand that the Commonwealth Parliament uh, made a pretty serious statement in, uh, in passing the Act and creating the office. Uh, and as such, we believe that we're going to be acting in the Tier 1 regime, which is cooperative and light touch. I also mentioned the end user notice scheme. This will allow us to uh, uh, identify a person who is posting material beyond the social media services, it can be via email, SMS or, or other electronic means, and serve them with a notice to cease and desist. Uh, should they not follow the instructions of the Commissioner, then we can seek injunctive action uh, against that person uh, or people uh, until such time as they stop, uh, stop their actions. And again, uh, uh, we'll start by warning, we'll start by notifying people, we'll start uh, hoping that uh, they'll understand that there are now people in government who will deal with these matters and should that fail we won't hesitate clearly to take legal action. But if all we did was take down material, if all we did was respond to complaints from families and kids, we'd be playing what I would say is a whack-a-mole game. It's a game that we actually can't win. Uh, if all we're doing is responding to complaints, then this office will have failed. The office will only succeed if we change the social attitudes of children and those around them to how they should be behaving online. Now, that's not suddenly becoming uh, the moral police. We're suddenly not trying to change uh, what people can and can't say online within reason, but we are actually about social change. We're about making sure that bystanders, those who are next to children being attacked, uh, stand up and support them. That kids around other children make it known to the bully that it isn't acceptable for them to go about their very destructive behaviour. Now, should we succeed in doing that, then our office will indeed succeed. Uh, as someone that's spent the last 15 or so years in the space of trying to bring about that type of social change, I can tell you that I know it's a steep hill for us to climb. Uh, and it's a steep hill that uh, we may or may not succeed in doing, but it's important for us to try. And I believe that most people with kids uh, in this room today would agree that it's uh, high time that we do try. So it isn't just about enforcement and regulation. Our office will be about social change. And we bring about social change through continuing the exceptionally good education efforts that the ACMA started in uh, uh, programs like the CyberSmart program, uh, which uh, goes into schools at a great rate, that reaches out and uh, uh, educates children through, through uh, what are remarkable uh, relationships with the school system. Uh, there are something like 10,000 primary and secondary schools in Australia, and the CyberSmart program reaches through all of those schools in a consistent and scalable way. And that education is to do three things. The first is, as I say, to bring about social change, to make it less likely that a child in Australia will suffer from these types of things or will engage in activity to cause another to suffer. The second is to equip them with the, the tools to withstand what I would be calling the slings and arrows of being in an online world, the resilience of the child. And the third is to equip them with the right level of information to know where to go to should things go wrong. Uh, and they suffer online, that they know that they must complain first to the social media service and then come to our office for help. Now, as I've said, that's really quite a daunting task if you look at the maths, the number of kids and the number of issues that we're facing. And I don't think this office can do it on its own. In fact, I know this office can't do it on its own. And for that, uh, we need your help. So let me start by addressing each of you in this room and say that uh, if nothing else, when you are uh, on the weekend at a barbecue, assuming the weather's slightly better than it is today, and for those of you that have flown in from Canberra, it's 
toasty warm outside. Uh, but let's say you're having a barbecue on the weekend and uh, someone says to you, I'm concerned about what my kid's doing online. I'm concerned about how they're acting or I'm concerned about how they're being treated. I'd like each one of you to know that there are things that can be done, there are things that are being done and there are things that you can do to help. And the first is of course to give the right type of advice and the role of this office will be to try to get that advice to you so that you know what the right words to say are and that you can help that person find help, find professional help uh, should the need arise. This frankly should not be a job my kids are doing. This should be one generation. It's our responsibility to change uh, the cycle, to break the cycle, to make sure, as I said, that bystanders are no longer uh, disconnected, that bystanders actually do the right thing. And if we look offline, we can see many examples uh, where society itself has actually dramatically changed in the, in the space of one generation. And that's the challenge I put to you today, that in 20 years' time, there shouldn't be my replacement, or perhaps several replacements later, uh, uh, having this same chat with your successes. This needs to be something we break now, and for that, I need to enrol you if possible. But it goes further than that. I actually am looking to the help of your organisations as well. Uh, I want to know how you and your organisations can help us. Uh, I'd like to know if you could help us take our message out, uh, whether we can work through your organisation to get uh, messages out through your staff uh, so that we can get those messages to families. So we're, we don't just rely upon going through schools as we traditionally have. Uh, I'd like to work with you to work out how we can get the scale out to the broader community. Uh, one of the things I learnt in science in school is that repetition aids learning. We can't afford to get the message out once to kids. This message needs to be seen time and time and time again. To build a brand and to change society, we need to make sure that the message of how to behave safely online for, for kids, who will become the workers uh, that uh, Mike was talking about, uh, we need to do that now so that Steve can do his job easier or his successor can do his job easier uh, because they have more resilient workers who know how to be safe online. That starts with kids. So how you can help us scale that message. Now, unashamedly, I'd also like to work out uh, how you can assist us in doing better research, how we can perhaps form some type of uh, social funds in order to accelerate the research that we so desperately need to do to work out what messages have cut through, uh, what impact do these activities have on kids, and how we can be doing our jobs better. The day uh, online of governments doing this stuff alone is dead. I'm sure Steve will be saying exactly the same thing at the macro scale uh, of industry and society broadly. But at a micro scale, when it comes to how we're going to be dealing with kids and their families, uh, government needs to work with you as well. So, I'm open to your ideas. I'm open to your suggestions on how we can do this together and I hope indeed that we can find uh, ways to do uh, those ideas together. Now, any of you who have ever worked in government or with government know that there's an asterisk next to that statement. Uh, it can be difficult working with government, I'll make that a mission to you. It can be difficult working in government and there are certain uh, guidelines and procedures that need to be followed. Uh, shortly, we'll publish on our yet to be opened website uh, guidelines on, on what our priority areas are for research and our messaging uh, and we'll call on you to see whether you can assist us uh, in ways that meet all of the Commonwealth obligations for probity and transparency and level playing fields but at the same time ways that we can partner together in what I think is an exceptionally important cause for us. Now uh, I've already mentioned the ACMA. Uh, the the uh, introduction said that I, I, I work for the Australian Communications and Media Authority. The reality is this is an independent office that's been formed that draws its staff um, uh, from the ACMA. I'm privileged actually to inherit a range of things the ACMA has been doing now for quite some time, perhaps just less well known by those of you in the room. The Australian Communications and Media Authority, to its credit actually, uh, uh, for quite some time, as I say, over a decade with CyberSmart and 15 years as an organisation, has been actively involved in trying to reach out to families and kids to help make them safer. What we'll do is build upon the good work, I'll take those staff uh, and we'll expand our efforts. That means we already have established relationships with police, 
with non-government organisations and, as I've already mentioned, schools. Uh, 10,000 schools in Australia that we work with on a daily basis. Um, also, we, we are inheriting the, uh, the role that the ACMA played for the Broadcasting Services Act. I know you sound pretty excited uh, by the thought of that. But the Schedules 5 and 7 of the Broadcasting Services Act relates to uh, uh, refused classific classification material online. Essentially, we're talking about child sexual abuse material. Last year alone, uh, the, the team that uh, is moving into the office referred 10,400 matters uh, overseas uh, in relation to child sexual abuse material online. And uh, the service level for that material being taken down is 24 to 48 hours. Quite a remarkable thing if ever you've tried to take material down online, whether it's a phishing website or something else, to actually have a team of people in 10,400 times being able to take material down between 24 and 48 hours. So we're inheriting that, we're building that up, uh, because I think it's an important social role for us to play. Look, in conclusion, can I say that I actually think the internet's a great place. Uh, I've been gainfully employed because of people misusing it now for quite some time. Um, I, I would like to think that uh, my kids aren't going to be as equally gainfully employed in this process. There are remarkable things that our kids can learn uh, and are learning through the use of technologies. Remarkable things they're doing to communicate with each other, to accelerate the, the pace of social change, to bring about good in the world. Uh, I believe that the types of issues this office will be uh, covering off on, the things that matter to the actual safety of a child are critical roles. The, online, the Enhancing Online Safety of Children Act uh, creates that safety net for your families and for your friends' families. I'd ask you to use it, but most importantly, I'd ask you ways that we can work together. Uh, we can be an example to other countries on how to actually grasp what is a nettle that uh, so far no one else in the world has tried to grasp. Um, I know there's a survey on the app. I've used the app already myself today, um, so I'll just show you how modern I'm becoming in my new role. Um, and I'd ask you, perhaps, I don't know how we do this, but, but the survey, uh, I, I ask you a few questions in the app uh, to see if uh, you can assist our office. So feel free to make use of it. I'm not sure if there's a free text field uh, for you to give me some blunt feedback, but I will be around during the coffee break, uh, just as Mike is, uh, if you want to give me any. So thanks very much for your time, and I look forward to working with you.